Hello and welcome again to my workshop. Today we're going to 3D carve this Mona Lisa 3D relief which uh, on the previous video we cleaned up and made all the tool paths in Carve Coat Maker Plus and we're going to carve it in this reclaimed very old um, piece of oak it's uh, let me see seven eighths of an inch okay or 20 22 millimeters in uh, thickness and uh, I reclaim this from an old wardrobe that I was given I broke it up about 10 years ago and um, one thing you will notice with this wood when, it, when it's being machined you may see some smoke coming off the tools um, now it's not that I've got it running uh, you know I've got the RPM running too fast on the cutter what it is it's many 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 years of polish okay wax or whatever polish was used for 50 100 years however many years it was has soaked into the wood and it's that that's causing the smoke <laughs> and uh, you know cause it does actually tend to uh, discolor the wood a little bit with with the tool not going past that um, so this should turn out quite nice so what we're actually doing with this uh, now the you know the old wardrobe was free to me but if you went to a reclaimer's yard to pick a piece of good straight oak up like this it would probably cost you oh I don't know two or three dollars maybe well with a CNC router and Cavco I can turn this two or three dollars into many hundreds of dollars <laughs> because just out of this one piece um, you know sort of bypassing the odd max I could probably make six of these carvings out of this one piece of wood and I know that such a carving when it's completely finished and varnished is worth about 150 180 dollars and this machine will turn them out okay turn the whole six out in a day quite a long day but it'll do it in a day um, so it, it look it you can actually make a thousand dollars of work output with a set a, a, an in, and I stress this an industrial type of CNC router okay so this CNC router isn't a toy it's not made with extruded aluminium it's solid cast iron and solid cast aluminium very very strong structure uh, you know and I will stress that you're not going to do it with a with a toy okay so I should just um, cut off a section of this wood now and mount it on the CNC router nice and square and uh, I'll take you through the full process okay so I've cut off a length of wood and my favored method of attaching uh, you know a piece of work to my bed I've got a waste sheet here it's just a old piece of MDF and what I do is I put a hole in each corner to put a screw through and that's more than sufficient um, I find that the easiest way to uh, attach you know to your, your table now then um, I'd just like to show you this I think the cameras are picking that up okay I've just cut through this board and it's like a brand new piece of wood 
brand new piece of oak. And if you had the time to count the rings, well, there's more than 500 on there. Um, and I would say that the tree that it came off is probably a lot more than that. Probably a thousand years old. Oak tree. Live a long time. Anyway, so what I do, I know that this edge is square to my table. And so is this edge. So to get it square onto your table, it's just a simple way of doing it. I got a just a T square. Pop it on there like that. Line this edge up. And get a couple of screws. You don't have to drive them in very tight, okay? Because you know you might end up splitting the wood, which I have done. Um, you know, it just doesn't require it, as long as it's firm. That's it. That's all it requires. Incidentally, underneath this video, and at the end of the video in the credits, you'll find a Cavco discount code, which is a 5% off their products right across the board. That will come in very handy. Uh, this was all put together in Cavco Maker Plus because I had to treat the 3D relief as it came into Cavco. Okay, so then what I simply do now, something like this, I put the origin of the work or the 0 0 position X and Y in the center of the material. It's much easier to to line up rather than try and do it on one edge or one corner. So you to just simply put a cross in the middle going from side to side. That's all you need to do. So now I'm going to fetch the gantry up and set my zero position. Now whether you've got an industrial machine or whatever you got. I find it well worth in getting one of these. I use a radio one. I, I have a tethered one as well, pendant, and they're very, very handy. Okay. And very controllable too. So now I'm going to set the x, y, zero coordinates. Now I've got a I've got a router cutter in here, not a not an end mill, and uh, so it's got two cutting surfaces on it. So it's fairly easy to, to, you know, sort of find the center of the material with your, your X um, by using those sighting, those two cutting surfaces. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now, you know, within half a millimeter which is you know 32nd of an inch when you're dealing with wood a little bit less maybe it's fine you know you don't have to get a DTI gauge out and find the absolute center I suppose you could if you wanted to but uh, you know there's no real need so I'm going to take you over to Mark 3 now and show you how to zero the X and the Y in Mark 3. Okay, so you see our X and our Y buttons here, X, Y, and Z, and these are our DROs. So, DRO means digital readout, by the way, nothing complex here. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do now, because I we've set our uh, X and Y coordinates on our machine there, we've got to set them on in Mac 3, the 0, 0 position, and this is making the 0, 0 position quite easily. Get your cursor, come up here and press the X, goes to 0, press the Y, goes to 0, and the next thing I'm going to do now, before I do the Z, okay, I'm going to put the program, our first uh, roughing strategy, into Mark 3. And you simply come up here to File, Load G Code, Cut number 1, 12 millimeter, and it's in. It's as simple as that. So now we're going to set the Z. Some of you may have seen me set the Z in earlier videos with a piece of paper. In other words, you just fetch it down very quietly and you put a piece of paper underneath the tool and uh, fetch the tool down to just traps the paper and then set the zero. Well, this machine's a an industrial machine and it comes with a setting tool and uh, it's also a very good idea if you're having a industrial machine like this, you know, make sure it comes with a tool setter. It's just simply this. You put underneath the tool on top of your work and press function and probe. Job done. And it's already set it in Mark 3. So now we'll start the job up. Now I'm starting this job up at a 20% um, of the feed rate that was written in Carveco. So I'm able to slow that right up to make sure that the job goes uh, according to plan in Mark 3. So here we go. I've changed the tool now to a tapered ball mill, this is a 2 mil ball at the end. So now what I'm going to do is show you the second method of zero in the Z, and that is with a bit of paper. So you just put the piece of paper underneath the tool, of course this material here hasn't been machined or anything, and you just very quietly 
bring it down until it just traps the paper there like that and you set the zero in mark three okay so now we'll get started with the finishing cut here we go So there you have the Mona Lisa in 3D. I hope you enjoyed the video today. Not forgetting I used Cavco to create or I used Cavco Maker Plus to manipulate and clean up this Gr original grayscale relief into a 3D relief and made all the tool paths in Cavco Maker. Now if you're interested in any of the Cavco products whether it be Maker, Maker Plus or Cavco the main program there is a discount code below this video above the comment section and also in the credits at the end of this video. Thank you for joining me. I'm Roger Webb and it's bye for now.